So, yeah, and I'm not, um, not following anything after that. I mean, it just seemed like life as I knew it had stopped. This was something else and there was no backward glances. There was no, there was no sense of continuity. It was an absolute falling away of what had been a high. So, so yeah, it's just, no, it's this, it's just as if it had just started then, you know, bang, all gone. Like a dream, you have a dream and you're in a different country or, you know, with a completely different scenario and you're not thinking about your waking life, you're just totally caught up and there's a tidal wave in the dream or whatever the hell, but you don't think, well, this isn't possible in London. <laughs> but a bit like that, it's just suddenly a... But it's all cool, there's no anxiety or apprehension, it's just all cool. Only in the... I mean, that can vary as well, but in the moment of the seeing, maybe there is like a split second of this is horrible, like a death, like a where is that? And it's really hard to put in words that where is that? Like something has lost the person, there's no, you're just gone. And, and, and in a way, that's, that's where the love is, but it's initially, it's just kind of like a shock, almost like, but a beautiful shock and a subtle shock. Um, yeah. But because there is a sense of, I don't know how to describe this, but it doesn't really make sense, but it felt like before then that experience added something, like you collected, ex in my case, I collected experiences, or I'd be very excited, oh, I had this amazing experience, bang, there's something there, there's another experience, bang, you're adding them up, you're collecting, there w that would go on, there was nothing, there was just moment to moment life as it's happening, no, um, I don't know. Was there anything fami familiar about it? Not in my case, it just felt very natural though, it, it, if that's a sense of familiar, it was just, I suppose that's why I used the words coming home. Mm. Yeah, like, I guess that's why it just felt safe. For the first time in my life I felt safe, I felt held, held by no one, held by love I guess. And everything was okay, but more than okay, it was just, yeah, I think I've used often heaven on earth because that was how it was seen, it wasn't as a metaphor, it literally seemed like I was seeing heaven, like, um, but life becomes more ordinary as time goes on, so, yeah, because I looked at that tree and I, when I had the, the experience looking out the window, seeing a tree, it was like the first tree, but the beauty was so overwhelming, that was all I could think of was the Garden of Eden or it was something like that. <laughs> So this experience that you are um, explaining, is this a specific one experience that you had and were you practicing anything that led to it? Was it like a spontaneous spiritual awakening or what, what, what led to that revelation that you are explaining? <clears throat> well, it wasn't an experience, as an, I mean it never left, so it was just, you know, it was just seeing things how they are, that seemed, it seemed to be the seeing of the true reality, so I, you know, I suppose an experience sort of necessitates an experiencer as well, so the experiencer is the thing that disappeared, make sure you can see. <laughs> um, in the sense of anything leading to it, I mean, no, I mean, it, it seems very much out of the blue. In the story of time, of course, you've got your story, so anyone could create that. You know, I could create the story of suffering, which was certainly there, and how it kind of seemed to increase or whatever. Um, but in the seeing itself, is the seeing that there's no one who could have done anything about their predicament, like, because there is no one. 
Um, so that's the actual saying. So it's kind of paradoxical as well. Like, so there's nothing you can do. Um, and it seems to play out in life as well. So a lot of meditation or whatever, it doesn't lead to this necessarily. Although it may inspire glimpses, it may inspire other energetic states, more peaceful mind and all that. Um, did your own, because you mentioned a glimpse, it's all right. Talk about that. Did, did that seem to come out of something or? It was during like a, a meditation, kind of like a ceremony. Um, but it was fast fleeting. It would, would have lasted a few minutes, if, if that. Okay. And I, I've never experienced anything after that, ever since. Did, did you know what it was? In terms of... Um, like, did you know it was a glimpse? Did you know it was like... Um, so in, in that state, as in I, I completely lost all sense of who I was. The, the I, the David that existed, was no more. Uh -huh. So again, it's paradoxical to explain it because I'm, I'm explaining what I experienced. But in that moment, there was no I. Uh -huh. There seemed to be just just the universe, just a connection of all things. Right. Okay. And then I slowly located myself back into my body after a few minutes of that um, that experience. Right. Um, okay. And you took? Did you take anything in the ceremony, or was it just a ceremony? Yeah, like just, it was just ritual. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's common enough that, that in the ongoing the the abiding state, if you like, I think. Sure. Um, doesn't seem to figure because it's seen I mean but like there are correlates with suffering and so on but so are you abiding in this state now is is it this is the, the what you mentioned is that what you are experiencing now is it, you say that you there is no seer yourself is this something that you're experiencing moment to moment or is this harking back to something you experienced before <coughs> Yeah, no, it's, I mean, once it's seen, it's seen that it's always the case anyway, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's never left, you know, in the story of time, I could say it's never left, it never leaves, no matter, I mean, fear could arise, but, and people talk about that being a kind of constricting energy, but, you know, you can feel kind of, whatever, constricted, but the sense of location doesn't come back, and the sense of love doesn't go either, that, that connection doesn't go, so it's, um, it's just, you know, touch where I can't imagine what it's like, what it would even, even if it were possible to go back, I know some people have talked about that, like where they've had years of, you know, being in this state, which is in this state, and seem to have gone somehow, but it doesn't seem possible, I mean, it just seems like this was always the case, but there is that. I think when the illusion is there, it's so convincing, isn't it? It really seems like there's there's a me here, like a, a physical boundary, and mm -hmm. when you're meeting someone else, you're meeting them as others, so it's, it feels hard for me to imagine that, almost like I'd need an awakening into being human to know what that's like now, because it just, it's almost like um, that's so, so in the past for me, or so gone. Not that there is a past, but in the story of time. But there is, in a sense, the story of time. I mean, you still live according to that. Okay, the reality of that has shifted and changed because, you know, but the human life continues, but there's just no one living it. So it's all very contradictory in a way, but mm -hmm. so it's very ordinary. Like, life goes on. I think about what I want to do and what's happened and stuff, but that's just going on for no one and it's not the same so is anybody boiling to death by the way because i think it's 30 degrees <laughs> i'll just turn it down a bit You've been reading Ramana, mm -hmm. Ramana Maharshi. Yeah, I find it um, 
interesting that yes, it's this it's this contending with this paradox, isn't it? It's this opposing ideas in tension with each other that doesn't seem to make sense logically, but it's a, a state that you're experiencing. So when you say there is no I, there is no seer, well, you know, you 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 found yourself hot in this room and you got up and you changed the temperature and you came back. But at the same time you feel there is no you in a certain sense. There's no one doing that. There's no one doing that. Could you kind of explain that a bit more, what you mean? Well, Dawn's doing, I mean, I don't like to use my name in the third person in a way, but like, okay, so Dawn's doing that, but there's no identity with that at all. So there's just getting up and doing that. And of course, everything's experienced as if through Dawn in a way, like, so doing that, but being isn't located anywhere and there's no substitute for being. So there's just what's happening, so that's done. I mean, everything said about it, by this makes it sound more exotic than it is because it actually is pretty straightforward. It's just because when you're talking about it, to get the subtlety of it, or to, it seems to involve paradox, but actually the experience of it is pretty normal. Like, it's just pretty normal. It's just whatever that is, that, that illusion of self is, is gone, you know, the centre, ev everything adds weight to it, but it's the centre of experience. There doesn't, there's no need for that, but it doesn't make my life, my life any less important than, than before. Like it, in some ways it does, maybe, maybe in some ways it does. Like, well, the fear of death maybe takes means that you know the fear of death having gone at least I'm not facing death. So if I was facing death, it might be other than that. I might be terrified, but I'm not. That's not happening right now. So you know, it doesn't seem. Whereas when I used to think of death, I used to be like terrified. I'd have a lot of reaction around that. So it seems to be very changed. Anyway, it's very changed. But. Um, so, in a sense, I don't know, so it, it does alter how you, what was my point? I was making a point and I've forgotten my point. Um, I'm not sure, but it, um, yeah, so it alters your, what was my point? Was I making a point? Do you remember? Anyway, it doesn't matter. You were talking about dawn changing the temperature. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know. Well... Oh, life being less important. That's what it was. Okay, so, so in a sense it is, as in... There's a sense of when I'm walking, sometimes I get, whereas if I drop dead, the thought of that doesn't seem particularly unpleasant to me. Sometimes it seems almost pleasant, but it does. It's not like a suicidal urge, which is much more, you know, you know, struggle, struggle. Um, because I, I was I was suicidal before this, prior to this, you know, suicide attempts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that was gone, you know, just and not not so obvious as like, well, there's no one to kill. I mean, that's very, uh, but in a, probably in an energetic sense that. Because life is enough. It's probably more like that. Life is enough. Like, so the conflict, which was existential is gone because how can there be existential, you know, um, how can there be existential conflicts in this? Like, um, you know, search for meaning, that's an existential, um, one of the existential things. You've got to create your own meaning, create a sense of responsibility, um, well, that, well, you don't, life is whole, life is, is okay without that. You don't need to create your own personal, I mean, later on you might want to go down a route where you get fulfilling work, or do something that touches you that's much more in tune with who you are, to, um, who you are intrinsically, who you are authentically. Um, 
but it's it's just so rich it's just so full that that all those kind of concepts fall away and all those ideas of I mean you know life is inherently absurd or actually it's not really you know it's it's good life is good the sting is taken out of it it's you know Is laughing. Bob looks like he's laughing. Smiling. Yeah. <laughs> no reason. Yeah, I guess your closing line was life is good. Life is good. I think, right? I can say the opposite also. I can say <laughs> life is good. I can also say that at the same time, I could say that this place seems like rich and beautiful and worthy of just being here like you know like I never used to understand why people have kids I do understand that now it you do not need to justify it. it's like oh do we need more children in the earth or you know like or whatever like there's something beautiful about life it it needs no justification it's good it seems inherently good and it seems inherently worthwhile at the same time life is fraught it's full of you know, it's got death, it's got disease, it's got unpredictability, all these awful, horrible things. <laughs> like, so it's kind of like a heaven and a hell at once, really, in a way. Like, and there's no square in the circle on that either. It's another paradox. It's, um, you know, so, I mean, you could, because you can access the personality if you think about it for a moment. If I think about you know, your, your personal shit, your issues, stuff going on, like, fuck, it's awful, life is, yeah, and then you're just here, you know, because in a way you can turn towards the mind, you can look at the mind, or, but in the awakening, more of the energy seems to be just in what is, which obviously is beyond the mind, so there's, there's the re release from that, which it kind of is, like a prison, isn't it, like, if you've got that going on 24 seven and it's negative, which it is for a lot of people, it's, it's kind of a torture. So initially when the mind is blown, if it's completely blown, it's, I mean, may, I mean maybe, um, because there's so much tension in that, I think it probably has an effect. It's probably not a surprise that a lot of people don't sleep for maybe years. I don't know how long, but it's like just the, the ordinariness it's so beautiful, it's just, um... Do you feel trapped in this? I don't feel like I'm in this, or not in this. So there's no sense of... There's no real affiliation with this, like... There's an intimacy with life that, that goes on here, but that's not who I am. And there's no... There's no one who I am, there's no... It's just, there's no one, so... You know, it's personal and impersonal at the same time, I guess. So. Do you have a sense of location in it? No. No, it used to be very definitely. I think I was more of a head person with no body. I think I was more stuck in my head. <laughs> I know I was. So I, I think maybe, maybe I became more like that. Like I think I was more in my body than more in my head. So I felt very much like. But it felt very, very in here, in the, in the world, very separate. And the anxiety of that separation was really intense. Um, talking to people, the, the fear of the other, the, you know, how do they regard me? And like, it, it just seemed terrifying, that sort of split between self and other, like, um, you So know. how do you deal then with difficult, um, well, initially I dealt with them in a really bad way, like, because no, I, <laughs> I mean, the, the same way as you, I mean, dealing with difficult people, I wouldn't have, for a start, my pattern was that I wouldn't have known that somebody was difficult because I would just be like the difficult person sponge, be just like, just, just dump it here. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't know to really differentiate between people. I had to learn that, like, 
you know, not everyone is the same. I sort of thought all minds are alike, like people want the best. Some people actually want the worst for you. <laughs> like some people just hate you and they just, you know, and most people are a mix, right? But I didn't realize that there are those people who um, will seek you out and, you know, that, um, like the whole personality disorder thing, um, you're my, falling in love for someone who's borderline or someone who's narcissistic is like, you're my favorite punching bag, that kind of thing. I didn't know that that was a thing. So, um, so my patterns continued. Um, maybe in an altered form, it's more subtle. Um, probably burnt up fewer calories. <laughs> Kept me up less at night, shaking. <laughs> but just, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So, but but how the awakening affects that? And maybe um, because there's that. I mean, I think that in a subtle way it probably does because there's that total acceptance. So of everyone as as they are, because there's no one doing that. So there's no one choosing to be difficult in a sense. So. I think that probably does subtly affect, but it depends who that's happening to in a way, because some people have very different personality structures. Obviously, I think in my case, maybe there was a, uh, a bit more kind of not reacting, like just just kind of seeing that or seeing the difficulty. Um, so it didn't feel like it impacted me as much as it would have done before. Um, uh, less reactivity, maybe. Um, Earlier you were talking about absorption, mm -hmm. so if there's a, a nasty person around you, you're, you're absorbing their nastiness as well? No, no, I, I just mean, um, I just mean a state of absorption, like, like maybe the way you feel when you're slightly drunk, you know, like there's, you know, with the first glass of wine or something, there's a, a letting go, your ego boundaries seem to be loosened. You, I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but it generally is, isn't it? You feel like you're a wee bit, um, you're kind of a bit more where you are. So it's just absorption into, so if you're having a conversation, absorbed into that. If it's negative, there's still the absorption. The absorption is love, like it's it's very loving. It's, so it's, even if there's something negative going on, it's, the, the absorption feels really good. So it wouldn't necessarily feel bad. If someone's giving me shit, and I'm gonna say it, it doesn't necessarily get through that. I mean, some. Some people are very good at getting through them, actually. But, but generally, you know, it feels much more, because there's space for that, there's like, and it's just, it's just what it is, and it isn't, I don't know. It doesn't affect, things don't affect in the same way. I think they go through me much quicker, so even if there is that difficult person, and there is shit, and it, say it does trigger me, it'd be like, a minute or two, it wouldn't, it wouldn't linger, it wouldn't, you know, um, but the absorption is just the, you know, staring at a tree, you know, kind of merging with that, like just, there's just the tree, there's just, um, like, like when you fall in love with someone and you just want to sit with them and stare in their eyes, <laughs> stuff like that. There's a kind of absorption there, right, so. They're your favourite punching bag, which you guess. <laughs> In which case, you're probably just gaslighting them or something. Going, no, you didn't say that. What I heard was... <laughs> something like that. So, when you say that um, there is, you know, you're talking about dawn, but there is no, this really not you, that's there. Um, and you spoke about the, the person in the past that might have been negative towards you or whoever. Oh, there was no one actually there as well. So w w what, what, do you, what do you think this is that's playing out now? So like in this room when we're talking to each other, if you're not really there and supposedly I'm not really here, what, what is this interplay between us? How would you explain that? Well, you're here and not here, and I'm here and not here. But, the, you know, it's this isn't who I am, but it's Dawn is very much here. Like, 
So we're just having a conversation. It's no different than what you're experiencing. The only difference is it doesn't feel like there's anyone in here and or there's anyone in there. So, but the whole experience is the same. In the way that it's different would be impossible to articulate, really, because it's kind of energetic. You know, that sense of location being gone, that's kind of energetic. It's... Um, but, but on the face of it, everything is just exactly the same. Like, um, it's just on a feeling level, on an energetic level. So you could, I mean, because if you take the stance of just oneness, you would say, well, there's no, there's no one here. There's nothing going on. Because that's true to say as well from the non-dual, you know, but there is a, whole, a human experience as well. That's why people talk about the relative and the absolute. No, you're not allowed to talk about the answer. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Because, like, yeah, so, you know, on one level, there's nothing happening. Nothing ever happened and nothing ever will. There's just nothing. There's no, this is just appearing and disappearing. Mm -hmm. here and disappearing. You know, it's just, um, but, I mean, for me, I would talk about having a conversation. I would talk about having relationships, friendships, things to do, da da da. Life is normal, but it's experience. Without an experiencer, so it's just, it goes on um, and continues to grow, to expand. I mean, not the, not the awakening, not for me. I mean, some people talk about a deepening and I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, for me, it's not, well, like the experience of oneness deepens. Um, psychologically, there's, there are changes for sure. Um, but in some cases, I, I, I wouldn't speak for everyone. I think that's very individual, you know. But one of the biggest freedoms of this, apart from like suffering, to, to an extent, because suffering arises and it falls away, arises and it falls away, which it kind of does anyway, but maybe if you're identified with it and it stays for an extended period of time, it's much more painful and yeah. it just kind of rising up and, yeah. you know. Um, so, I mean, that's altered a lot here. Um, so in a sense, that's, I don't know, it's kind of the same, but... <coughs> Dreaming is another interesting one because um, during some dreams can be unconscious, a lot of normal dreams can be... So I don't know whether it's awakening in dreams or not. Some of my lucid dreams I'm aware of being in no location. <laughs> lucid dreams seem to be aware of that dimension much more than a normal dream. So I'm not saying it's not there in normal dreams, but um, it seems to be there in lucid dreams. They're quite interesting, but... Um. This, this state or realisation that you have, do you see this as something that um, those that are on a certain path should aspire towards? Is this something that is you know, a positive thing that one should try to attain somehow? Or? I think a lot, I mean, the spiritual, I don't know, in some, in some ways, I don't really want to say anything negative about that. It could be very interesting and fascinating and, um, you know, with the psychological, you know, that can be interest. It's just, um, there's a lot of, you can buy into a lot of crap as well, like without realising it if you're on a path, because when this is seen, it's so simple and there's not a lot to say about it. And like, for me, because I'm a psychotherapist, I. I don't go spouting non-duality stuff in my sessions, do you know, like I don't, um, unless somebody asks me something, but I, I don't see that as relevant to the psychological set, unless somebody's had an awakening and they're bringing that and how that's affected them, or they are awake, that's different, but, um, so a lot of people are just, too, I mean, the, the beauty of this is the, the loss of the sense of authority, so, because if you're a seeker, you're projecting onto the other, and you can't see them anymore, like, like, like when you're in love with somebody, you can't see them, right? You know, they're perfect in your eyes, like, it's similar with the, the teacher, someone at the front, you know, and, and 
your judgment is just totally out. Like, I mean, there's the belief that if they undermine you, well, they're doing it for your own good. They're helping you with your ego, getting ready, whatever. Like everything is twisted into this as if they are the ideal parent and as if they're doing things for your own good. So getting rid of all that is, is really good because you realize you can't really think for yourself. I mean, some people seem to be able to to some extent, so they may be really in touch with their authentic selves, I don't know, but if you can't trust that sense of authority, you're like imprisoned by the other, you're in prison and you can be imprisoned by the most banal ideas and you'll see them as extraordinary, like, I mean, people come out, a lot of spiritual teachers come out with the most banal things and you're like, wow, and <laughs> like it's just, but you're hearing them without that gooey feeling of love like it's just oh my god you know wow and it seems so arbitrary like so someone ends up being a multi-millionaire because they've got spiritual books out and it's utterly you know like it's just very childlike like it's um it's all like this it's like my god i mean what is what is there in life like really <laughs> it's a great equaliser this it just just is no one's special if someone's particularly smart um, even that you know like it, it just I don't know I don't know it's good it's very freeing it's just very it's intriguing it's really interesting because you don't realise how much you know you've been trapped really and these ideas of people, um, that leaves you kind of alone with that as well, because if you were to try to have a serious conversation with somebody who didn't get that, they'd probably just think you're fucking nuts or up yourself or something, I don't know, anyway. So the danger is also, yeah, you, those projections, of course, that's what leads to like spurt abuse of the spiritual teacher or whatever, exploitation. It makes, well, makes exploitation in general possible, doesn't it? And, but in the normal psychological sense, that's, we're vulnerable to exploitation because we're usually in denial or something or repressing something or... We don't know what equality looks like. So there's, there's two kinds of, you know, there's the, the psychological awakening as well, which isn't <laughs> like, isn't this big, you know, shift of perception, but nevertheless, it's a really important shift. Um, without which you probably keep your life might stay in the same tram lines, which after awakening is probably a shame if, if unless your tram lines are pretty good, because some people, you know, it can happen out of the blue, your life might be all right, you might be in a good relationship, you might have a job you really like and kids you love and, you know, nothing changes after awakening, you don't care to, I mean, because it's become more common, I think, I mean, that's probably more the case, you know, probably a lot of that. Um, 